Hey, we're going to start getting ready for um, our flying trip tomorrow morning. Um, we're heading to Utah to meet with the mouse surgeon, Dr. Nathan Richards. Um, I'm going to be doing a two-part video, hopefully. Um, the first part is how I fly medically. Um, I'm going to start with um, how I pack everything up, um, including how I... Um, store all my medication, what I'm going to do with my feeding supplies, um, my heparin and my um, flushes for my pick line. I'm just going to give you guys a rundown and we're going to pack it up in a box and bring it with us. So we're going to get started by plugging in my pole because we want to have a charged battery. So there is that. It is plugged in. We're going to head out there and we're going to collect bags, feeds, um, some rubbing alcohol, um, some syringes, and a bunch of stuff. So let's go. Start with the pick line because that is the easiest. So I'm going to grab, um, let's see. Six heparin, or, or no, three heparin, six flushes. And I'll grab the gloves later. Line is done. All right, so my prescription's written as like I'm supposed to go through six cartons a day. I can barely make it through two at this point. Um, another uh, question for the surgeon. Um, I um, I haven't been doing my feeds like I'm supposed to because it's causing so much, not pain necessarily, like really uncomfortableness. I get really lethargic and I just don't feel good. Um, my GI ha is lost for words. Um, my dietitian is also. So hopefully um, Dr. Nate... Nathan Richards will have some answers as to like is there any tips I can do if you have any tips for me Please comment them like I am I am up for any tips so we need Two bags because I won't be doing I'll be doing like one today But I won't be hooking up tomorrow when I'm in the plane so hook up after that and I'll go through the night and then I'll have one for I'm just talking myself through this. <laughs> um, we're good there. We're going to grab six carts. Now that I have the food, I'm going to just wait until my pump is um, charged. I will put that in there. Um, I'm going to grab some of the hooks and the sticky um, guide strips. Taking my clothes, I tightly bundle them like this so that I'm able to make sure that I have room for all my chargers. I'll need my charger for my wheelchair battery, I'll need chargers for my phone, my laptop, and I'll need my charger for my feeding um, machine. Um, 
so that's a lot of chargers um for me like personally like i just like that kind of overwhelms me a little bit like how much um electronic um charging thingies that i need i don't even know what i'm saying like <laughs> i'm so nervous if you can't tell um the only thing that i need to do now is to find all the pieces um that I need for to pack my um, wheelchair battery. I'm not allowed to have that on the plane, so I do have to pack that and um, have them board it underneath the plane. So I won't be using that. I'll have somebody pushing me through the um, airport, but the next time you guys see me, we'll probably be at the airport. All right, guys, so we made it through TSA. We're on the plane. We're a thousand feet in the air right now. Um, TSA was a little bit more complicated than usual. Um, I didn't you know, go through the scanner, so they just like patted me down, took everything through, uh, made sure that I wasn't blowing anything up, and um, went through everything in our bags. So um, we did that, and then we went and we got on the plane. My wheelchair is down below the plane. I have. So how do I travel medically? Um, I use my wheelchair inside the airport because walking long distance and I do not get along but if you are disabled at the airport they offer free um, transportation to and from your plane so I really encourage you guys to use a wheelchair when you guys are traveling it makes it so that you don't have to worry about saving your energy um, when we get to the, the um, spot that you board your plane, I take off both wheels of my wheelchair and I take my cushion and my battery. Um, the wheels in the seat go underneath the plane. The cushion and the battery stay with me inside the plane. Um, once we get off, it's just like regular. We put the wheelchair back together and we go to baggage claim. So the next time we see you guys, we'll be at Ronald McDonald and I can show you how we packed everything. See you then. You know, the most stressful thing about going to Utah is that we don't really know if we're gonna have lodging until like we get here. So um, we stay with the Ronald McDonald house, God bless them. Um, so they go on a list and so whoever the family's in the NICU and the pediatric floor they obviously get first dibs and then the rest of us get filled into the house um so I've been waiting on the list for the last two days someone just checked out I got a call that we have a room so that is another thing lifted off our shoulders which is amazing we have to go stop off at um the store to grab a couple things and then we will be at the Ronald McDonald house and we will unpack and get comfortable there because right now I can tell you I am not a happy camper. Rest. We are collected. Um, our luggage got really shook up and we also lost it at the airport for like a short minute like not like a huge finasco but a little bit because it has a lot of stuff that I need in it, you know? Food supplies, pick supplies, the whole nine yards. And our clothes. <laughs> we kinda need our clothes. Um, but we're in a lovely room. Um, it was supported by um, Southwest Airlines, which we flew it, so there you go. Um, but I'm ready for some sleep, so I'm going to take my medication. I was going to show you guys how I packed, but it was, like, so jumbled that, like, I don't want to pack it again until I have to, you know? Like, it's been a long day, so we're just going to save that for um, when I come back in March, you know? I can show you guys my packing then, um, but... We're here, we got here in one piece. We got everything all together, everything's good. Um, we think we're gonna go to the aquarium tomorrow, maybe um, some shopping, some like window shopping, you know? Um, and I'm just nervously waiting for my appointment on Monday, which 
which is at 9 a.m. which I find out I found the address finally because nobody called to confirm they called my mom and were like oh okay we'll call her because they wouldn't tell her anything and they failed to call me so cool um, but I found out where his office is so we'll go see him and uh, We decided to go and have some fun today because I am super anxious about this appointment tomorrow to see the mouse surgeon as a surgery consult. I know mom is very stressed out about it. I am. I am. I'm very stressed. Um, so we went to the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium. Um, I met a really cool guy older gentleman who who drew this amazing fishes and I complimented him on um, the ones that he were just drawing these ones and he ended up giving me the drawing and that was really really cool and um, he would like to send me another drawing once we get back to um, Dayton so that's really cool I'm excited to see I just think people's minds that can work like that, that can draw like so quickly just by looking at something, y'all, you blow my mind. Um, so we are going to go do a little bit of window shopping and find mom some food and we'll be back at the Ronald McDonald house and we'll touch base with you guys tomorrow morning. But. It was a really fun experience at this aquarium. It was yeah, very it was. big and very, very cool. They uh, also told us where all the spiders were, so we didn't go to those spots. Yay. So we appreciate that one. So mom decided to tucker me out so that I won't think about what's going on tomorrow because she does know that I'm nervous. And she successfully did it. She took me to the biggest aquarium that I've been to in my wheelchair. And then we went to the mall. Cause retail therapy. I found really cool pairs of vans and I'll post a picture of those cause they're dope. Um, but we are going to go to bed soon, I hope. Because I'm tired. Got a birthday sash? Oh, I did. I did find a 21st birthday sash. So I can't say what it says on the sash because this is YouTube and we are child friendly. <laughs> Good morning. We um, are getting ready to head out to the mouth surgeon. I am scared shitless. Mom didn't get much sleep last night because I was lecture lecturing her on her driving to the airport while I was sleeping and I was sitting straight up in my sleep and I was making new best friends in my sleep and I it was a long night for her. <coughs> I'm super scared. I don't know what's going to happen. I you guys are probably asking at this point like why are you so scared? I'm scared to be told again that I don't know what's wrong with you or you don't have mouths and now I'm at square one where I don't have a diagnosis or all, all the tests come back normal like mom says like I I'm so scared of getting the wrong answers that like if I do you can guarantee I'm gonna cry like I for me this is like life-changing because food for me is life like I love food I like to sit down at Red's 395 Grill which is here local in Carson City if you haven't tried it go check them out I love their buffalo wings they are like when you get like 
a rotisserie chicken and you chop off the wings that's your wings right there you have to snap those in half and yeah yum you gotta like get their like um femur and shit off of it and they have the best sauce like this is kind of like weird but like to the point i would like bathe in it like i want it on top of everything french fries chicken beef I mm, no wait until you're pregnant <laughs> <laughs> um gosh i i just love that sauce so much dip it in bread dip it in fruit i'm i meant vegetables not fruit but it's good sauce so like it's life-changing like i need to eat again i want to eat a meal and be okay <laughs> and not feel like i'd like to die because of how bad the pain is and the pain medication's not working i want food like i'm s that's why i'm so scared like i just want food like this skinny girl would like some curves back on her, okay? We're here. We're going in. We got here a little bit early so that we could find the office because nobody called me to um, confirm. They called my mom and she didn't know that I didn't know where they were located, so... Uh, communications key um, I've learned a lot with uh, this trip like traveling medically um, I need to pack like a day's supply extra just in case of any emergencies and um, anything like that so I will talk to you guys after and this is why you show up to appointments early um, my appointment is not at it's not at the um, Latter-day Saints hospital uh, offices or at the hospital. He's at the U of U clinic, which I thought he'd left the U of U, which is what I was told. So we're a little bit confused, but we actually know what time our appointment is. So it's not like ASAP. So we have a lot of time to get there. So that is good. So if you've never seen somebody before or you're in a new state, um, show up early to your appointments to make sure that you're um, actually at the right office. So yeah, we don't want to fly this far and not be able to see the doctor. That would have sucked. Yeah, it would have sucked. <laughs> We've been waiting over a year for this. So. Find address. Y'all say my name like ten times, and then you walk away without calling me back. Like. All right, we just got back into the car, literally. Um, we are racing back to the Ronald McDonald house to grab our things and then off to the airport because we have to return our um, rental car. Which, by the way, let's start with that. This bad Woohoo, almost did it. <laughs> this bad car is so cool. It's got heated seats in the front and the back. It's got a heated steering wheel. Um, in the back seat for the kiddos, they have, um, you can kind of see privacy it, these screens. privacy screens that you can pull up and put down as you want. Um, they've got, um, USB, um, plugs on each chair back here. I like, they like kind of thought of everything. Like it it's got its own vacuum, vacuum cleaner. It's got its own vacuum. I mean, the storage in here is among us the space room it, there's just so much room for legs like no matter how tall you are like my six foot seven dad would fit very comfortably in this car my mom says she doesn't like um minivans, minivans but she loves this one um so now that we've got that car it's review chrysler, over it's a chrysler I don't know. chrysler pacific pacifica and, and it only has 700 miles on it yeah we got it yeah it's got 739 miles on it now and um 
So let's go to the doctor now. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Nathan Richards was uh, the surgeon I met with today. Um, after a very anxious long wait, um, we met with him. Very, very cool doctor. Um, even though that I'm 21, I don't have doctors that talk to me when I go to appointments. They always talk to my parents. Um, he was worried about conversation with me, not with my mom. Um, he was very respectful, explained literally everything from stem to stern, like from bleeding to recovery to what you're going to do on the way there. Um, it was just, I'm very understood. I, I understand a lot of what he was saying and um, he is going to go laparoscopically, robotically and um, rem uh, make a small cut to release the ligament and um, between three to six months we'll know if it actually worked. Um, if not then we'll start looking into something new but hopefully this will be the start of something great. Um, I have it set for March 12th. We come back March 9th for um, other appointments. So we'll get those done and then we'll go for surgery. Should be in, admitted for one to three days depending on how I'm doing. Um, it could go up to, yeah, and then we have to hang out for a week here just to make sure everything's good. We don't have any um, problems that occur because I do have a um, high clotting um, factor. They are going to watch that very carefully. But they're taking care of you. They're, yeah, I believe that they're going to take very good care of me. It's going to be at the Latter-day Saints Hospital here in um, Salt Lake City, Utah. And um, I just think that I'm in very good hands. Um, my friend said that I would be in great hands and I am absolutely in the best hands, I believe. Um, so let's just get to March 12th. Um, well, TSA was a, a mess and um, it only took 20, 30 minutes to get a woman to come in first me to be able to come sit on the plane so that was fantastic and then they took my phone and lost it and so we finally found that halfway through so it's been a mess and I haven't filmed going through the airport so I apologize and we'll Coming in hot, this is Brittany. I'm gonna tell you a little bit how it is to travel in an airport with a wheelchair. Um, if you think that you're gonna get through TSA in a couple minutes, you're wrong. It's gonna take 20 minutes plus, and it, you should plan an hour to an hour and 30 minutes more than what your plane tells you need to arrive at because it's better to be here early and to hang out rather than get stressed and have a lot of anxiety that you're going to miss your medical plane trip or just your trip in general. Um, it, I would look out for others because they're not looking out for you. So don't be afraid to be boisterous and let people know that you're right behind them or if you're, uh, you need to get around them. Uh, I don't know. Mom, what's another thing that I should let them know? I want you to talk about what things you should bring and what things are not necessary oh, yes. and can be packed. Yes, yes, that's very important. So I decided to skip out on all the makeup and um, uh, besides mascara and put some more extra things that I need into my makeup bag like hand sanitizers, um, lotions, <coughs> barrier creams, um, stuff like that. Um, don't don't think that you need all of the things that you do every single day, but remember like the small things. We're uh, going to now make a checklist because we realized that we got here with no handicap placard, so we could not park handicap, and that was a little difficult for them. Um, I forgot mini chargers, even though I said I wanted to pack them, so we are going to make a list now, a permanent checklist of everything that we most definitely need for our trips. I want to um, bring at least two days extra supplies with me. Um, I found out that um, even though my supplies usually works at home, um, I found that a lot of it actually malfunctioned. malfunctioned. Um, 
my tape wasn't sticky, my stickies weren't sticky, um, I forgot a tube that I actually needed. Um, so don't think that you need everything like your makeup or all of your tech supplies. Make sure that you have everything you need. So I, before coming to the airport, looked in my owner's manual. We looked here. Um, it says that in here that I can bring my um, battery on the plane and store it in the overhead bin. Um, some batteries aren't like that, so make sure that you go into your owner manual, look for your battery information, and make sure to check if it's an open or closed cell battery. Um, I'm assuming mine's open cell because I can store it in the above bin. Um, that could be completely wrong, but I do know that it goes in the overhead bin because of my owner's manual. Um, most people think that when you're in a wheelchair, you're going to zoom past TSA. It took us almost an hour to get through TSA. If you're able to um, stand up and go through the um, scan machine and have your wheelchair se searched separately, you're going to go through a lot more, a lot, a lot quicker than you would if you would have to sit in your wheelchair the whole time. Today was that way for me. I had to sit in my wheelchair because standing up for too long is causing a little bit of Popsies attacks. So I stayed in my chair and it's more invasive. They get very friendly with you and they feel everything. You're not gonna get dinner at the end and you're not gonna get a phone number either. No tips even. I know, we're from Nevada. No tips? What is that? Um, but in all in all, please read your owner manual and make sure that your battery um, is something that you do know about because um, though this time we didn't have any argument, who knows what next time this brings us. So when I travel, I will be holding the owner's manual with me.